All right, so we're going to try to add a little bit more uh, controllability here to our functions. So one way we can control it, it goes forward, right, forward, right, forward, right. So it's driving in a square, and it's doing it for a specific amount of time, but we can change uh, the time at which it moves forward or right. So we can uh, actually pass what's known as parameters. So we can pass parameters through our function. In this case, we have a function called forward, and this is what it executes, right? So we can make a variable, and our variable is going to be a number. So in our case, the number is going to be there, like the time. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, those are the seconds, right? Um, it could be 500 if it's half a second, 2,000 for two seconds. Whatever it is, we're going to uh, call that variable time. And so whenever, whenever you're dealing with just integers, just whole numbers, you need this written directly in front of it. This is int. This represents an integer. So this is telling me this that time is a variable, and it's an integer variable. And so here, I'm going to go ahead and put time. So that way, every time I type in a number, it'll move it for that specific time. And so the same thing can be applied here. We'll call it. Um, and call it time two and call it time r for right and so time r and so whenever we're moving forward so now since the variable is in this parentheses right this is the parameter that it, that's passing through the function so whenever you type in a number here it'll automatically go here so it'll be the time. So let's say I wanted to move for forward for 500 uh, milliseconds. So that's half a second, right? And then I want to make it turn right for two seconds. And then we'll make it go forward for 100 milliseconds. And we'll make it go forward for or turn turn right and then forward for 3 seconds I'm just trying to do dramatic numbers so that we use the difference turn right for 100 and then forward for one second. So let's see if this works. So there's a three second forward stop for five seconds I forgot about that one and then it repeats itself all right so we can adjust time let's uh, make this a little bit more complex notice we still have a lot of code that we can possibly simplify so um, if you look here these four lines of code are very similar to these four lines of codes and these four lines of code so um, right off the bat I'm gonna stop simulation if you see some commonality right you see something similar within codes you can probably make some adjustments to simplify so the only thing that's different here are the six five fours and the lows so we can actually or lows and highs right so we can actually change these values and these values we can make them variables just like we did with time we were able to change time for each of the motors spinning we can actually dictate which motors spin and just use one common function for it um, so let me go ahead and give you some 
tidbit of information that I didn't provide. Anytime you see the word high, um, that's an equivalent of one. Anytime you see the word low, that's an equivalent of zero. And if you don't believe me, you can actually witness it for yourself and you'll see that the motors still spin, right? Regardless if they're high lows or ones or zeros. All right, so now you know, now you see a bunch of numbers, right? Six, five, one, zero, these are all integers. So we can change those integers. So like I said, motor six and motor five, or sorry, six and five represent one motor. Right, we'll call that M1. And four and three represent the other motor, we'll call that M2. So we can actually create a variable, we'll call it M1 and M2. And this would be for motor one, motor two. So this is motor one, and this is motor 2 but then we still can't really specify so what we can do is we can uh, get a little bit more elaborate and say M1R for the right motor and we'll say M1L so this is motor, the first motor right, the first motor left, the first motor right, or the second motor right, and the second motor left. And then we have time. So in here, instead of, we'll call it six, we'll say M1R. M1L M Scratch that. These aren't going to change. What's going to change are these. So this is Right, because the, the motors are going to stay there. They're physically in the same spot regardless, right? So we're going to keep it. What you're changing are the highs and lows, the direction. And so M1R, M1L, M2R. and M2L. The spaces don't matter. And we no longer need this function. Actually, we're going to call this function something else. We'll call it move. So it's going to move. And so now we can say, hey, if we want to move forward, this is what we need to do. We need to call the function move but motor one will turn on. So this, the first number is motor one, the right. The second number is motor one, the left. And remember, only one of them should be on if they're the same motor. And so, and you could just play with these numbers and determine that for yourself. I forgot one variable. The last variable, notice there's five. One, so you need five numbers. Two, three, four, five. So the last number is time. So it's not gonna be a one or zero. It's gonna be like a, you know, 1,000 or 2,000 if you want two seconds. Actually, let me go ahead and make a comment and say, this is how it works. So the first number is 
um, motor one right, motor one left, motor two right, motor two left, and time. So this is how this function is going to work. So this is one motor right here. So if you want to make it spin in one direction, this should be a one, that should be a zero. This is the second motor right here. If you want to make it spin in one direction, this should be one, this should be zero, or vice versa, right? This could be zero, this could be one. And then this is time. So now I want to move it forward. So let's say this is forward. And I can make it move right. When you make it move right, only one wheel is working. And let's make it do for half a second. And then you can make it move left. Remember, left and right, only one wheel is working. And we'll do that for one second. Maybe two seconds just to switch it up. And then if you want it to stop completely, We'll make it stop for one second. All right, so let's see what this does here. And there it goes. So it works. So that's how you uh, simplify functions. Disregard that. That should not be there. So notice what we have now is a completely uh, simplified from what we had beforehand. So you can change um, any kind of, any kind of, anytime you see redundancy, redundancy, it's best to kind of manipulate your code so that way you can avoid it, just so that way you can maximize the memory in your Arduino.